Hi everyone, Chris here again with a lesson on matching headings. So I'd say true, false, not given is the one that students worry about the most. And then a close second is probably matching headings. Now, as you probably know, I don't teach any tips or tricks or anything like that, but I'm going to show you a very, very powerful, I wouldn't call it a trick, I'd call it a very effective method for getting matching headings um, correct or nearly all of them correct. And I'm going to share this with you today and I'm going to show you live um, how to actually do this. So I'm going to look at a real question um, and I'm going to show you how I would do this technique and, and how we're going to do it. So. Um, this type of question tests your ability to understand the main idea of each paragraph. So it's always important to understand what they are testing. Each of the different types of question tests a different subskill. One of the subskills that they're testing is your ability to look quickly at a paragraph and understand the main idea, the key idea in that. Headings are short sentences that summarize the information in a paragraph. You have to pick the one that best summarizes the information in a paragraph. When you look at the real question, you'll understand um, what this means. You will be given between five and seven headings and asked to match each paragraph in the reading text to one heading. There are always more headings than paragraphs. So this is one of the things that they're testing also is can you tell the difference between the headings? So it's really testing your ability to understand meaning. So what skills are tested? Understanding the main idea of each paragraph, but not only that, they're also testing how to, how to quickly understand the general meaning of the paragraph without reading every word. Now, a quick um, a bit of information on skimming. Skimming does not mean reading something really, really, really quickly. All right. It means strategically looking at certain parts um, of the paragraph so that you can understand the general meaning. And we'll look at this. It's, it's easy to say this, but it's more difficult for you guys to understand what it actually means without me showing you a real question. So if you don't understand what that means, don't worry, we'll look at a real question in a second. And how to differentiate between two or more similar headings. In other words, how to differentiate between different meanings, okay? So you might get two uh, headings that are very similar and that what they really want you to do is, is understand what the each means and be able to determine which one matches with the paragraph. So let's look at some common problems. Lots of information to process and not enough time. And I'm going to show you some ways to cope with that. Um, many students panic when they see these questions and they get o they get overwhelmed with the amount of information that they see. Um, so we'll look at a technique uh, that, that will help you with that. Not understanding the statements as a whole. Many people look for uh, keywords. All right, this comes down to uh, bad teaching. All right, simply bad teaching. Um, many teachers say to their students, if you skim and scan and look at keywords, you'll get you'll get high marks. It's it's a lot more complicated than that. It's not complicated as in really 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 difficult. Um, as as always, IELTS is overcomplicated by poor teaching and misunderstanding of of what these questions are and what they're not. Some of the headings may appear to have the same meaning. Students do not spend enough time reading the statements. Um, so the actual headings, you need to spend time actually understanding what these mean. Um, and these will make everything much, much easier. We'll look at that in a second. Not understanding the main idea of each paragraph in the text. Obviously, the main thing that they're testing is do you understand the, the, the general meaning, the main idea? Um, if you don't know that, you won't be able to get the questions correct. So here's some general advice before we look at the actual questions. Do this question first. Um, I don't mean look for this question and do this first, but I mean if this is in part two or part three of the uh, of the reading test, um, and you have you know let's say you have a multiple choice, true, false, not given, and matching headings all in the same part do the matching headings on first. Because by doing this, you'll be able to get the general meaning of the text as a whole, and this will help you with the rest of the question, which requires you to take a more detailed 
look at the text. So this is not really about detail. And the way to understand a text is to generally quickly look at it first, then go into more detail. It's, way, it's a lot more difficult to look at the detail first and then the general meaning. So if you do see this question, do it first because it's much easier to do it that way. You're not expected to read every word of the text. However, that doesn't mean that you should skim really, really, really quickly. Okay, so th there's a balance here. There's a balance between not reading every single word and what some students do is just read the first sentence or just read the first sentence and the last sentence. It's not really about that. Read the first one or two sentences and the last sentence of the paragraph. You can also briefly look at the rest of the paragraph, but you don't have to read every word. All right, so it's not just about reading the first sentence and the last sentence. That's not what it is. It might be reading the first sentence and the second sentence, maybe even the third sentence and the, and the last sentence. But also, you might need to read in between um, quickly. Don't listen to people who tell you very, very strict rules about what you can and can't do. Um, you want to give yourself flexibility. Why do you want to be flexible? Because the, the questions will be different, the text will be different. So you need to have that flexibility. If there are words you don't understand, don't worry about this. Again, you should only worry about the general meaning of the paragraph as a whole, not individual words. I've worked with some students and they, they see this type of question and they see one word they don't understand. They're like, oh, I don't, know. I don't know anything about this paragraph. It's like, you don't need to understand every single word in a paragraph to understand the general meaning. If there are two or three headings that are similar, write them beside each other, beside the paragraph, and try to find out the difference if you have time to do that. If you still can't decide which one suits best, move on and come back later. Okay, so this is a detailed strategy for matching headings. And then we'll talk about how to, how to simplify this a bit. So let's get into the detail first um, because I, I don't want anyone to miss out anything. And then we'll get into a more detailed strategy or a simpler strategy, sorry. If this type of question is on the test, do it first. Don't look at the headings. Don't look at the headings first. Look at the text first. Read the first one or two sentences and the last sentence of each paragraph to understand the general meaning of the paragraph. Don't worry about highlighting keywords. Try to sum up the general meaning of each paragraph in one or two words. That is the key, okay? Try to sum up the general meaning of each paragraph in one or two words. It might not be one word, it might not be two words, it might be three or four words, but just try and add your own heading to each paragraph. And I'm going to do this for you, so it'll make more sense when I show this to you. Look at the headings and identify keywords within each heading. Match any headings that are very obvious and you're sure about. For the others, write two or three headings beside the paragraph. Identify the difference between each of the headings. Establish if there are any synonyms if the paragraph. If you still can't pick one, move on. The answer will often reveal itself later. Repeat until finished. So if I could summarize this in a very simple, easy to understand way, it would be create headings for each of the paragraphs. So look at the paragraphs first, create headings for them, match these to the list of headings. It's keeping it very, very simple. Um, what I'd like to do is I like to give people a detailed strategy first. If it's a, and if it's a little bit complicated, just do this. Okay, let's look at some real questions. Okay, so here we have matching headings question. So first thing is do not look at these. Okay, don't look at the list of headings. Do not read them. They'll confuse you. Do not read them. Um, read read cur this carefully. Questions one to five. Sample page passage six has six sections, A to F, okay? Choose the correct heading for sections A to D and F from the list of headings below. So this is very important. What does this tell you? A, B, C, D, E, F, E is missing, okay? 
So they're not trying to trick you, they're actually trying to help you. So if you look down below here, what they've done is they've given you the answer for E already, okay? So E is six, so what you can do is you can just remove this one immediately. You could stroke that one out, because that's already been done for you, okay? So you need to get section A, B, C, D, and F. And that means that E, you can delete that, okay? Because it's already been done for you. So that's gonna save you time, um, and it's also gonna save you thinking about it, okay? So let's read this again. Write the correct number one to nine um, in the boxes. So we've got our options here, so don't read these. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to read these. Okay, so how are we going to read these? And what are we doing? So what we're doing is we're creating our own headings. All right, and there are a number of ways that we can do this. Um, some people say read the first two sentences. Some people say read the first sentence and the last sentence. Some people say quickly read everything. Um, what I would say is give yourself flexibility. What I would say is read enough to understand the main idea. Remember, we're looking for the main idea. That could mean the first sentence, the second sentence, the last, it could mean you have to read everything. Um, give yourself that flexibility. But what we're doing is we're trying to come up with our own heading, okay? So we're reading this and trying to create our own heading. And then when we have like our own headings, what we can do then is go up here and see if they match anything here. But you do not want to read these list of headings because what they'll do is they will influence you and they will mean that you are really not creating your own headings. It means that you are really just copying headings and, and that, that's gonna lead, lead to disaster. Do not do that. So why do we create our own headings? We create our own headings because it's impossible to create your own heading without fully understanding the main idea of the, the section, of the paragraph. So it means you need to read it enough. And then once you've done that, it's very easy to match them with this, okay? So one other thing that I would like to say is topic sentences. What are topic sentences? Topic sentences are, as you should know from the writing course, a way of making it clear to the reader what the paragraph is about. In other words, what is the main idea? So what are we looking for? The main idea. Where should that be? In the topic sentence. So the most important sentence is normally, normally, not always, normally the topic sentence, which is the first sentence, okay? So what I would do is read the topic sentence. Okay, the role of the role of governments in environmental management is difficult but inescapable. Okay, so probably this it's about this. Okay, but let's have a quick read through it. Sometimes the state tries to manage. Uh, okay, so government, so it's still about government. Quickly, range policies, growth and organizing, politicians, politicians, government of the courage to confront the best. Okay, so I'm going to say this is government policy, government environmental policy. That is my heading. Okay, so I'm not going to go back up I'm not going to check it, okay? I'm just gonna keep going, all right? So, let's read the topic sentence. No ac activity affects more of the Earth's surface than farming. Okay, so it's probably about farming. It shapes a third of the planet's land area, not counting Antarctica, and the proportion is rising. Higher yields have been achieved by increased irrigation, yields and a doubling in the use of pesticides. OK, 
Okay. So it's, I want to quickly read this. So this is really about growth of farming or food output. Looking at all this, it's all kind of about that. Okay, so that's going to be, and you see that I'm not getting into too much detail. I'm just moving on pretty quickly. Okay, so this is a longer one. So with the longer ones, reading the first sentence and the last sentence is probably not going to be enough. You're probably going to look have to look a little bit more. Okay, all these activities have damaging environmental impacts. Okay, so I'm going to bet that because this topic sentence is very clear, this is going to be about environmental impacts. Okay, these activities, what are what activities? Food, growing food, growing um, farm. So I say farming activities, agricultural activities, the environmental impact of those. So then you can see what they do here is they started off with for example. So from the writing course, you should understand that what, a, what is an example, they're supporting their main idea. So this should just be more of uh, examples of environmental impacts, okay? So let's see if it is. Land clearing, chemical ver fertilizer, intensive farming, soil erosion. Okay, so what this is, is environmental impact of farming. Why, why am I so quick to do that? Because they, they told you what it was in the topic sentence, and then they just gave you lots and lots and lots of examples. So by, by scanning, you're talking about land clearance, fertilizers, um, all of these different things, soil erosion, it's all just environmental impacts. It's just talking about the same thing over and over and over and over again. So let's move on. Government policies have frequently compounded the environmental damage that farming can cause. So it's by government policies. So this is a really long one. In rich countries, subsidies for growing crops and price support farm output. Subsidies, subsidies. Talking about subsidies. Subsidies, subsidies. So it's mentioning, so subsidies, if you don't know what that is, a subsidy is when the government pays someone to do something. Um, so for example, paying a farmer to use, if you use fertilizer, we'll give you money. Or if you, you grow corn, we'll give you money. But if you grow Bananas, we won't give you money. So it's it's government support for farmers, basically. Um, so it's talking about government policies. So subsidies are an example of a of a of a um, a government policy. So I'm going to say because it mentions subsidies so many times, I'm going to say this one is about subsidies. So that's my one. So we can delete E. Okay, let's move on. A result of the <coughs> a result of the Uruguay round of world trade negotiations is likely to be a reduction of thirty six percent. In the average levels of farm subsidies. Okay, so 
a result. So it's a consequence of these world trade organized negotiations. So what are they what does the topic sentence say? The topic sentence is saying the writer of this is saying, now I want to talk about the consequences, the results um, of world trade organizations. And these what they this is what they are. So did they continue to talk about them? Results, yes, talking about what they are, going into detail, going into explanation. It will mean results, it will mean this. Farmers need every incentive to use them. Okay, not really related, but I'm going to say result of world trade negotiations. Okay, so just bear in mind that I could do this, I can do this, and you can do this much, 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 much quicker than I'm doing this right now. Um, it's because I'm re I'm really talking you through everything. Um, but don't worry if it, if it seems like it's taking a longer time. Now, just a word of warning: this is a very, very, very effective uh, technique. It really does help. However, it does not work 100% of the time for 100% of the answers. Most of the time, most of the answers, you'll be able to match them pretty quickly. But there will be times when something just doesn't match up and you need to come back and have a look, okay? So don't get frustrated if this doesn't work for you 100% of the time. Um, there is no 100% foolproof way of doing these. Um, this is giving you the best possible chance. Um, but don't worry too much about it. Also, do not create a, um, a heading and then look for the exact words in the heading in in the thing. It's, it won't match exactly. You have to think of synonyms. You have to think of different, slightly different meanings. Keep an open mind, okay? So, first one, government environmental policy. So what you'll do is come up here now you need to read these and understand them, okay? So you need to take the time to read these and understand them. The probable effects of the new tr international trade agreement, okay? I understand that. The environmental impact of modern farming, I understand that. Farming and soil erosion, I understand that. The effects of government policy in rich countries, okay? Government and management of the environment, okay? Farming and food output, okay, the effects of government policy on food output, the new prospects of world trade, okay, fine. So, government environmental policy. No, no, no. Okay, this one's quite specific. It's about rich countries. No. Governments and management of the environment. Maybe. So we'll put a, I can't put a tick. So let's put a Y for, or let's put an M for maybe. Um, farming and food output. No, the effects of government policy on food output. Let's have a look. No. The new prospects of world trade, no. So the only one that it really matches is this one. So section A, I'm gonna say is five. So remember we're, we're on the clock, okay? We need, we need to get going. Um, and what I would do also is I would remove this one because it's, it doesn't match my heading exactly. Government environmental policy, government and, uh, and management of the environment, management of the environment, government policy. It's, it's kind of the same thing, and none of the none of the the rest of them match up. So what I'll do is just bang remove that, and I, oh, but <laughs> in case we get it wrong, um, so let's just put X here. So we've removed these two. Um, 
so I don't look silly. All right, so B, uh, growth of farming and f uh, growth of farming and food output. So to make it easy, so I don't have to go scrolling up and down for the purposes of this lesson, I'll move this up here. Ugh. Okay, growth of farming. No. Maybe. No. No. Farming, farming food output nearly exactly the same. Maybe. The effects of government policy, growth on food output, maybe. Uh, the new prospects of world trade, no. So what we've done now is we've got two that have very, very similar meaning. Okay, very similar meaning. Farming and food output, the effects of government policy on food output. So the differentiating, uh, the, the difference between is this is the effect of government policy. Okay, so what we need to do now is we need to go back to B and see if it says anything about this. If it says anything about this, then it is 8. If it doesn't, then it is 7. Okay, so it says nothing about government policy. Nothing, okay? So if we go up here, it is seven, I think. Let's hope. <laughs> so, X. Okay, so C. Environmental impacts of farming. Probable effects, new trade agreement, no environmental impact of farming. Environmental impact of farming, probably. Um, God. Um, <laughs> why did that, why did that happen? Ugh. You know, okay, maybe we can move this out here. That's better. Okay, farming and soil erosion, no, 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 no. This is what it is, okay. Boom, boom, let's move on. So you can see it becomes much easier. <gasps> Sorry, this is the first time I've used Adobe Acrobat where you can change a PDF. And I'm obviously not very familiar with it, but uh, <laughs> forgive me. Um, okay, D. What was D? Very long one. Subsidies. So. Subsidies, no, 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 no. Okay, so this is one that just doesn't match up. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to go back and we need to have another look. But another little bit of advice, if you got one like that, okay, so you thought you were really sure that it was subsidies. I was really sure that it was subsidies. It's just not here. What can happen is you can go in here and get lost in all of this information and panic and be like, oh, it's not subsidies. What is it? What is it? What is it? Okay, don't panic. What I would do is just mark that as, you know, put something to indicate that you haven't answered it yet. So let's put question mark and try and find F because F might be an easy one and that means that you've knocked out another another option making it much easier for yourself okay so let's skip that one let's go to 
F because I also noticed that there's ones that are talking about trade negotiations. Um, so this might be an easy one to do. Result of Result of World Trade Negotiations. World Trade Agreement Negotiations, very similar. No, no, no. New prospects for World Trade. New prospects for World Trade. Okay, so we've got two that are very similar. The probable effects of the new international trade agreement. The new prospects for World Trade. So what we need to do is we need to look at each of these and look at the difference between them. Okay, so this one is about effects. Okay, so effects, results, consequences, things like that. This is about prospects, all right? Future, what's it going to be like in the future? Um, guesses, speculating. Um, international trade agreement, world trade. So two different things. International trade agreement is an agreement, it's a document, it's a contract between countries. World trade is just general trade between countries. So let's have a look. Result world trade negotiations. Let's have a look at the topic sentence. Result world trade negotiations. Effects. Okay. Result, effects, synonyms. Boom. It's this one. Okay. So. In as oh where did that go? This in as one, and then we go back to we delete this one. So you you obviously won't be de able to delete this in the real test, but you can you know some sort of mark to to you could you could, you could delete it. Don't delete it completely because you might make a mistake and you need to read it later. Um, so this means that we're left with four things. Farming and soil erosion, effects of government policy in rich countries, the effects of government policy on food output, the new prospects for world trade. So let's have a look to see, let's have a look at the topic sentence. Okay, so why did we choose subsidies? Because it says subsidies, 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 all these different things. Okay. Um, So let's have a look at the topic sent. Government policies have frequently compounded the environmental damage that farming can cause. So government policies effect on the environment. So it's nothing to do with soil erosion. Delete that one. It's not talking about new prospects for world trade. Delete that one. The effects of government policy in rich countries. The effects of government policy on food output. Rich countries. Okay, so what, it's talking about government policies and then it's talking about rich countries. Okay, so this is a topic sentence, and then this is modifying the topic sentence and said, okay, when talking about government policies, this is what the whole the whole um, next three paragraphs are going to be about, but I'm only going to talk about rich countries. So let's see rich countries. Denmark, rich country. New Zealand, rich country. European Union, rich country. Okay, so it's not subsidies. It is, hopefully, for rich countries. Why is it not effects of government policy on food output? Let's just double check that. This is not really talking about food output. Okay, so we're pretty certain it is what we say it is okay so now let's look at the so 
the answers to see if I'm correct. And hopefully I don't have to make this video again, because if I'm wrong, I'll have to do it all again. Uh, or we might be able to learn some lessons if I'm wrong. Um, okay, A5. Let's see. Yay. B7. Yay. C2. Yes. Or, yeah, 3, 2, yeah. yeah. Um, 4. Like D4. 4. And 5, 1. Yes, thank. I don't have to. I can go home early. I don't have to make this video again. Okay, so what did we learn from doing that? Um, we learned that a this method of creating your own um, creating your own headings is very effective. However, it is not foolproof. There will be times like my subsidies thing, and that wasn't a mistake, by the way. That wasn't a evidence that this this doesn't work. This is just evidence that sometimes you need to look a little bit harder. Also, what we learned was sometimes you will get two things that are look very, very similar, but you just keep calm, look at the difference between the two, look at the paragraph, and normally you'll be able to tell that. We also looked at the um, importance of topic sentences, but also Sometimes it might modify things. There might be a modifier after there. I hope that helped and made it um, as simple as possible. It's not easy, but they are simple. Um, if you just follow the simple um, procedures in this video. And hope you enjoyed it. And let me know if you have any questions. So um, what I'd like you to do is, you know, if you do have any questions, let me know if there's anything that's still... Um, confusing um, uh, and I think the best thing to do is get some practice questions of your own try and do them start off slowly uh, and build up your speed um, and, and things will become much much easier for you thanks very much bye bye